When I think about which businesses are the bedrock of the economy, companies like Afterpay are certainly not high on my list. I mean, I am fairly alarmed by the increasing need for young people to buy things in installments rather than just, you know, having the money in the first place. But regardless, there is a significant demand for buy now, pay later services, $125 billion worth of demand to be exact. And it's that growing demand that has driven the growth of many new buy now, pay later companies from Affirm to PayPal to about a hundred other smaller ones. But this week, Apple has arrived to wipe most of these companies off the face of the earth. Now that, that might sound a little bit dramatic, but it also might not be. There are some key characteristics of the buy now pay later market that make a winner takes all scenario extremely likely. And even though Apple has only just entered this market, there is a good reason to believe why Apple will be the company that comes out on top. Just before we get into today's video, I wanna give a quick shout out to ShareSite, which is today's sponsor of this video. Particularly if you're in Australia or New Zealand, tax time is upon us. So it's a good time to get your investment portfolio in order and ShareSite makes it super easy to figure out what you owe in terms of capital gains and dividend income, as well as overall just tracking the performance of your portfolio. ShareSite makes it super easy for you to track all of your trades by connecting your broker and automatically connecting all of your trades and dividend reinvestments and everything that you do in your trading account will go across to ShareSite so that you can see an overall view of the performance of your portfolio, particularly if you have trades that you make in multiple trading accounts. If you want to learn more about what ShareSite has to offer for you, then head over to sharesite.com forward slash Hamish Hodder. And you can also use that link to sign up to a free account or a paid account where you'll get four months off a yearly subscription if you use my link. So go check it out if you're interested. This week, Apple hosted its WWDC event, the Worldwide Developers Conference held once a year at Apple Park in California. It's essentially a way for third-party app developers to see what changes are coming to Apple operating systems across its hardware products so they can plan future implementations. The event included a lot of different tweaks and updates, but most interesting to me were the several new features coming to the iPhone's wallet app. The wallet app, prior to the announcements made this week, was essentially a way for you to have all of the cards that are typically in your wallet it on your iPhone. Things such as credit cards and debit cards, loyalty cards, boarding passes, tickets, even IDs in some US states you can have on your phone even when you're going through airport security. The goal here for Apple, of course, is to remove the need for a physical wallet. And while they've had some difficulty in some areas such as IDs and also getting car manufacturers to integrate uh, so that your car can be opened on your iPhone wallet, uh, they're pushing really, really hard to make an overall encompassing app that can really replace that bulky wallet that takes up so much space in your pocket. The wallet app then works with Apple Pay, which is the payment method you can use to transact through Apple, meaning you can transact in store at physical merchants using the MasterCard network or online if developers for an e-commerce website have integrated it. Apple also has an Apple credit card that's available for US residents, which is a titanium card that is issued by Goldman Sachs and runs on the MasterCard network and offers things such as cash back on Apple purchases up to 3% and also cash back on any purchases through Apple Pay of 2%. So Apple was already progressively expanding the types of financial services it offers users and that continued this week with their wallet related announcements. Merchants will eventually be able to accept contactless payments to an iPhone without the need for a traditional point of sale terminal or even something like a square terminal which has been hugely successful for small businesses. But by far the biggest announcement of the event was Apple Pay Later. Apple Pay Later. The service allows iPhone users to pay for things in four installments over six weeks with no interest or fees so long as Apple Pay is available. The whole system is designed to be more secure than holding your physical cards in your physical wallet. In fact, they actually describe this as the wall around the wallet. Unfortunately for companies like Afterpay, the wall doesn't just keep out hackers. It's also likely going to keep out other buy now pay later companies, keeping them away from Apple users. Not literally, you can still on an iPhone go and download the Afterpay app and use Afterpay if you choose to, but people are very unlikely to do that after Apple Pay Later is released. For one, 
key reason, and that's because of a networking effect. A networking effect occurs in a business where the value provided to each user increases with a higher number of users. This results in a positive feedback loop or a flywheel where more users increases the value for the user base, therefore attracting more users, therefore increasing the value for the user base. And there's really two key elements of a network effect that make it so powerful and one of the best competitive advantages that a business can have. A network effect provides a benefit and a barrier, a benefit for the business and a barrier that prevents other businesses from encroaching on that benefit. The benefit is pretty straightforward. The bigger company that has a bigger network and therefore a more valuable service can charge higher prices for that service than other companies because they have a better service. And the barrier is that because the larger service with more users is so much more valuable than the smaller ones, it's extremely difficult and extremely expensive in many cases for the smaller businesses to gain market share. Think of it as new users coming into the market and deciding where they want to, which product or service they want to use or which service they want to use. They're very, very unlikely to use the smaller, less valuable network they're far more likely to join the largest one which provides them the most value. And what a lot of networking effect businesses do is they offer their services to the user for free, which means they're not actually charging a higher price, giving smaller, less valuable networks the opportunity to undercut them on price. The smaller networks, if they want to gain market share in a lot of cases, actually need to pay people to join their site. A really good example of this was Mixer, which was Microsoft's attempt to take streaming market share away from Twitch. In this case, anyone who wanted to be a streamer was joining and streaming on Twitch because that's where the largest audience was. That's where the most valuable for the streamer was and vice versa was also true for the user. There was the most popular streamers and still is on Twitch. So for both the users and the creators or the streamers, it made sense to join the largest network. So for a new entrance like Mixer, in order to attract streamers in order to attract users, they actually had to pay them. And that's exactly what they did. They signed a number of large streamers, including Ninja and Shroud Ninja for 30 to $40 million in order to get them to stream exclusively on their platform in order to attract users and gain market share. But even when paying tens of millions of dollars to try and get streamers onto their platform, the users were not following. And in 2020, the site was shut down and they cited poor market share and inability to scale in comparison to competing services. So the power of a strong networking effect should not be underestimated. So how do networking effects work in the buy now, pay later? to market. Well, there's really two key stakeholders that kind of work within this flywheel of a network effect. There's the shoppers or the consumers and there's the merchants. If there's a lot of consumers using a buy now, pay later service to transact, then more merchants will want to accept that payment method so that they can receive payments from those consumers. And the vice versa is also true. If a consumer doesn't have a buy now, pay later service yet, and they're deciding which one they should use, they're probably going to pick the one where most merchants accept it so that they don't sign up to one and then walk into a shop and find out that they can't actually use that service. And again, in most cases, this results in a very, very powerful winner takes all market because new entrants, new customers into the market are likely to pick the most popular option and merchants who are deciding which to accept are likely again to pick the most popular option. Unfortunately, at the moment in the buy now, pay later market, there isn't a distinct winner. There isn't one business that has gotten such a massive lead that the networking effect flywheel can start to function. There's actually so much competition, including businesses like Affirm, PayPal is in the business, ZipPay, Afterpay, Bright, Hum, Klarna, Latitude Pay, OpenPay, PayRight, WizPay, NabPay, ComBankPay. And that's just what I found doing 10 minutes, 10 seconds of research. There are hundreds of these different options out there, all trying to get a piece of this market. 
Even the largest players have small user bases. Afterpay has just 10.5 million active customers. Affirm has 12.7 million customers. PayPal has 430 million active customers, but they don't exactly tell us how many are using buy now, pay later. Most of them are just using their normal PayPal features. Apple, on the other hand, has 1 billion iPhone users with a B, 1 billion. And many of these iPhone users are already familiar with Apple Pay. They probably already have their cards in Apple Pay and use it to transact for a lot of different things. So if merchants already accept Apple Pay, then it is going to be a seamless integration. In fact, developers for e-commerce websites, if they accept Afterpay, they don't need to do anything because Apple handles all of the buy now, pay later side of things. And if you're a physical merchant and you accept MasterCard, then you accept Apple Pay because Apple Pay runs on the MasterCard network. So even though Apple is only just entering this market, they're bringing a huge user base who already use Apple Pay and are likely going to be able to easily use Apple Pay later and not have to download some other third-party app. And merchants almost entirely already accept it. Uh, physical merchants certainly do, as long as they accept MasterCard. And online merchants probably already accept it. And if they don't, they certainly will be after this announcement. A Cornerstone Advisors study in 2019 found that 7% of Americans had used the Buy Now Pay Later service in the last 12 months. Now, that 7% was done on a pretty relatively small survey, but even if we assume 5% of Apple's 1 billion iPhone user base decide to use a buy now, pay later service at some point over the next year, that's 50 million users that they're bringing five times the amount that the biggest buy now pay later services have currently. The most difficult part of a network effect business is getting the initial ramp up and momentum in a user base. The getting ahead of the rest of the competition far enough ahead that there's a significant value gap between your service because of the network effect and other services such that your service ends up being a winner takes all and taking all of the market share from everybody else. And Apple is essentially bringing a huge user base over pretty much at no cost to them. The caveat to this is of course that the biggest company doesn't always win. Um, there's much more than just having the most users. Uh, there's other elements. Uh, there, there can be differences in the value provided. Um, and I think a good example of this is the rise of TikTok against things such as Instagram Reels. Um, the reason why TikTok has been able to grow to over a billion monthly active users, even though uh, Instagram is a hugely successful social media platform as well, and now has Instagram Reels, which is very, very competitive to TikTok, TikTok's algorithm is far better even today. And at the beginning, when Reels just launched, it was many times better than Instagram Reels. And the result of that was that TikTok was able to grow even though it didn't have a networking effect yet. So the question in the buy now, pay later market is can competition around Apple offer a better service or a cheaper service in some way. Uh, it may very well be quite difficult since Apple is choosing to go the no interest and, and no fees route, which is kind of hard to beat when it comes to buy now, pay later. So it may be very difficult for smaller businesses uh, or at least the large ones now probably becoming smaller ones as a result of Apple's uh, integration into this market. It's going to be difficult for competition going forward, but uh, who knows what's going to happen. Maybe there will be some innovations in this space that uh, open up the market to some other potential competitors. Hope you guys got some value out of today's video. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a like on the video. With that said, hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.